Hello everyone. Kind of like to uh, introduce you to one of our other projects we've been working on. This is uh, a Remington 783 chambered in 243 Winchester. Uh, we was at Cabela's one time and of course everybody knows I hate sales. This was on sale. I think uh, the rifle with a scope on it, not this scope, but with a scope on it, was uh, $250. So, had to had to leave with that thing. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the, the 783. It's got a, a few differences from the 700. Um, one being is the, the size of the action. Let me get you in closer here. The 700s are opened up a lot more up here, I guess, so you can top load these things. This thing here actually has a removable magazine that you can pull out. And uh, I think that holds five rounds. Um, but there's a lot more metal in this action than there are in the 700s. So that's been kind of uh, attractive to me. You know, to be able to get more more strength in there, uh, uses a um, Savage style um, barrel on there, so you can actually screw the barrel in and then lock it down with the nut to set your headspace, which is makes it easier for you know somebody like myself to be able to do that at home with some simple go and no go gauges and a couple of tools. Uh, the bolt is dual lug bolt but it's got a uh, free floating free floating head on it uh, the 700s do not have a free floating head on them so when you lock it in it'll free float up a little better and kind of square up with the uh, with your chambering in there so that's kind of a, a nice little feature the um, trigger it's got a little two-step trigger that is actually adjustable and that trigger is different than a uh, 700 and uh, it, it's a lot easier to work on or to remove and I've, I've got it adjusted down pretty nicely so that's a that's a pretty nice trigger the uh, stock is uh, a very inexpensive plastic stock uh, the trigger guard is also also plastic. Uh, the barrels were supposed to be free floated but in this case it it wasn't free floated I actually had to do a little removal in there to get to get the barrel free floated. And as you can see that's kind of a a thin barreled rifle. The forearm on this stock was was pretty pretty flexible depending on how you were loading up or holding on it it, uh, it would actually bend and, and touch the barrel. So I ended up taking this thing off and filling the whole cavity with epoxy to stiffen it, to stiffen it up and I actually drilled two holes in the front of this thing and slid rods, little 3 16th rods through there in the back about out of here before I filled all that up and roughed it up and filled it up. So that, that stiffened it up a lot. That made it a uh, Made it a lot better to shoot, a little more, a little more consistent. Uh, I stuck this uh, little Bushnell 24 power scope on here to kind of help me see what I was doing a little bit. But um, I like the way it shoots now. Um, I like the money I had to lay out for it. That was pretty good. Uh, I'm shooting hand loads, hand loads out of this thing, um, and I've got them about. 20 thousandths off the lands is where I've got these things set for and uh, you know I ran through a ran through a test on it and uh, figured out what I was happy with uh, but uh, I'm guessing all these hand loads I've got right now are probably going to be pulled apart dumped out and redone because this little skinny barrel is uh, going to go away. This plastic stock is going to go away. 
Uh, they're finally starting to produce stuff out there on the market for these 783s and I've acquired some of them and um, we're going to put them on this rifle and see how well we can get this thing to shoot. But actually as it as it's sitting in this form, you know, if somebody were to go out and buy this thing and was wondering just how accurate it, you're getting, you know, for that kind of money, other than the scope that had to come off there. So, uh, it, it was a pretty nice shooting uh, rifle for, for what, uh, if you wanted to go hunting with it. Uh, it was actually uh, pretty ideal for that kind of money. But we're going to make it shoot better. And one of the first things we got to improve on our little uh, Remington 783 uh, came FedEx from Excalibur Barrel and Manufacturing. So let's have a little peek at uh, at this and see what uh, what we've got. So I'm gonna do this without cutting myself. Well, it's kind of exciting to get new toys. And it's not long after Christmas, so we kind of consider it some Christmas. piece of uh, styrofoam and more tape now I was kind of uh, doing my little window, window shopping on the internet with uh, all the sales that were going on between Black Friday and Christmas and New Year's so I've been kind of watching them, and I've already done a lot of research on who was making what and what I thought might work best for the money. I'm still trying to keep this as a uh, low dollar project. And our styrofoam turned into a piece of stainless steel. And that looks like a rather heavy, nice looking piece of stainless steel. 243 Winchester, 1 and 8 twist. I've got them, um, had them uh, thread the end of this barrel. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, as we know, I like to shoot uh, shoot my stuff suppressed. Five eighths by twenty four threading on there. That feels good. Locks up nice and snug. Mm. And I can look down the barrel and I do not see that suppressor at all. 
actually this rifling looks wonderful. This is their uh, 3R rifling. Uh, it's got a different grooving on it than the standard rifling. Finish on it looks absolutely wonderful in there. It's got just the right amount of scuff. Everything in there looks pretty clean and nice. Actually, uh, I think that's going to make a rather nice addition to our 783. As you can see, that's a pretty good sized barrel as compared to the original barrel. So I could probably shoot this thing a little bit more and not have to worry about uh, so much heat. Uh, but we've got uh, we've got some work work to do to things, and of course it's not not going to go into stock. Cause this barrel's probably bigger than that that stock is. But uh, that's our first piece for our new uh, Remington 783 build. Okay, here we are. We've got. Uh, Surprise package number two for our Remington 783 build. Just showed up. Uh, got one little boo-boo in the box, but everything else looks pretty good. And this one came from Modular Driven Technologies. In other words, MDT. So let's... Uh, Remove some tape and see what we've got in this little box. That looks like a new uh, Oryx chassis system. Oryx Precision Rifle Chassis. This is kind of a, kind of exciting. We've been looking at stocks for a while, and uh, they seem to be like the best best buy for what we we're looking for. screws, instruction booklet, and also, it also came with a, obviously a little flag indicator. I ordered the uh, stud for the end of it while I was there. Actually, uh, quite a nice looking little piece. And I ordered a uh, magazine from them a little while I was there. It's a ten round, ten round magazine. It's their uh, polymer, 
Farmer magazine. I figured I'd get one of theirs. It should fit in there properly. Make sure uh, everything's working like it's supposed to. It's a little cold, of course it's kind of cold outside. I actually don't mind that, uh, that grip, I wasn't sure if I'd like that palm swell or not. I actually kind of like it. The action screws. Of course, they're a little bit different length than the factory ones. Those are all out on the head. I've seen these things uh, online, I'm looking online quite a bit, and that's pretty much the view that you get. And I was always kind of wondering what the rest of it looked like. Let me uh, get the screw in here and get a bipod on it. See if I can give you a shot down the inside of this thing. Here's a view down the top of this thing. So that's where the back of the receiver sits. Uh, looks like a nice radius area for where the uh, action would sit in. Of course, your trigger will run down inside there. Magazine well. Release. Channeled up rather nicely. And it looks like uh, there's some room down in there if you maybe wanted to stick a little extra weight or something in it. It should be plenty, plenty far enough away from the barrel. The uh, Harris bipod, bipod I'm using on here is um, basically set up for a round barrel, and that's a flat bottomed stock, so I'm probably going to have to run a different Picatinny style or uh, M lock style slash Picatinny mounting adapter for that. It's a little. Uh, Allen screw right here. I'm not sure what that's for. But the finish of this thing looks uh, looks really nice. Nice butt stock on there. It's got a little rubberness to it. Cheek riser. That's of course that's adjustable. And that's adjustable for length of pull too by simply, I guess, loosening the screws and adding more, more shim in there. But uh, that's what she looks like. And uh, I just need to get that action in there and see what the whole package looks like. All right, we're back again. Um, and as you can probably see, we have our uh, barrel mounted on our Remington 783 action. I uh, opted just to go ahead and have my uh, gunsmith do it for me. I actually dropped it off and got it back the next day, so it was a pretty quick turnaround. And he did it for me cheaper than than it would be if I were to buy the tools to do it. And since I don't do a lot of these things, I don't necessarily need those tools for possibly a one-time use. So I let him go ahead and hook me up. He test-fired a couple of uh, couple of rounds through it, 
just to you know make sure his head spacing and everything was good. So he gave me gave me those two test fired rounds. Um, he was actually rather impressed with the uh, with the barrel that I got from uh, Excalibur. Um, and it's not very often that I get to impress that gunsmith. You know, he's been doing this stuff for you know over 50 years, so he's pretty good at what he does. So I started off with uh, a couple things we're going to have to change around. I actually took my uh, headspace gauge and uh, zeroed in on, on these rounds that he fired, just so I can check to see. Uh, what I've got going on with the ones I've already got loaded up and they are five thousandths too long. They will not fit in the chamber. Now I had these things sized for the uh, factory barrel and obviously there was a little bit more room in that factory barrel, five thousandths more room to be exact. Because when I sized these things down, I sized them down to about a thousandth under what the, what the chamber actually was. So I said I was going to have to jack these things apart, and apart they're going to have to come. Because I even had some, uh, some rounds that I'd already run through the sizer, and they're still, they're still the five thousandths too long. So I made some adjustments on my uh, tool. got them resized for it's set up to resize all that stuff so I have a good actual cham chambering on my cartridges and while we're at it we're also going to figure out where the lands are in this thing so I've got my uh, overall length uh, for the for the bullets I'm going to shoot out of it and that's where we're going from there and there she is Put together. All she's lacking is a scope. Plenty of room, plenty of clearance for the bolt. Bolt ejector works fine. Safety works fine. Trigger works fine. Plenty of room in the saddle there. She is definitely free floated. I told you I like the way it, it kind of saddled up in there as it come down snug. It snugged up real nice. It just kind of come laid right in. Of course I set it up and make sure when I tighten that screw that, that that lug was down pretty tight on it. I don't know if I want to try to put any uh, Epoxy down in there or not around that lug to make sure I got it make sure it is fitted up flat and perfect down there I might might try that in the future but uh, There it is We're happy to have it uh, I said just need to get a scope on it and get it out and finish breaking in the barrel And uh, we'll go from there